Hi everyone, happy Easter. Uh, so today we're gonna be making lemon raspberry loaf. Um, so let's begin with our mise en place as always. Uh, so this morning I took out my butter. I've had it um, sitting at room temperature since this morning so it's kind of like squishy and it's ready to go. Um, if you forgot to take out your butter, no problem. Um, there are a couple of videos online where they put butter and water and all kinds of weird things. Um, I wouldn't really bother with that. Just remove it from the wrapper and put it in the microwave for a couple seconds and that would be good. My mom is here, she really wants to record for me so I'm gonna let her do that. I'm just gonna flip everyone around here. So turn around, mom. They're looking at you. There you go. Oh. Do you want like that? <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I also have my um, yogurt and milk mixture that I got ready to go in here. Again, I took this out this morning so that we then come up to room temperature so it's not too cold. And then I also have my eggs that once again took out from the fridge this morning, so nice and room temperature. So let's get started with our mise en place first. So we're going to start off by getting our lemons ready for our batter and for our syrup. So to do that, uh, we have some nice yellow lemons here. When choosing a lemon, you wanna make sure that it doesn't have very many blemishes, that it looks nice and good, and that it's a nice, healthy yellow color. That's gonna give you the best flavor in your zest and also gonna make um, for a not bitter. So I have a little rasp here that we bought. Um, this one here is for zesting. You can also use something like this. This one's from Ikea. It's got really small little holes that you can use to zest your lemon. Um, so I'm gonna use my little rasp friend here. So one thing you wanna make sure of when you're zesting your lemon is that you're constantly turning your lemon so you don't over zest in one area. If you over zest, you're gonna hit the white pith and that's what's gonna make your batter bitter and not taste sweet. So we just take our lemon, I washed these earlier I towel dried them really well so it's nice and dry and ready to go. So for me, I take my rasp like this, take my lemon, make sure it's on its side, and you just grate down. I'm not applying tons of pressure, and as I do it, I'm turning my lemon to make sure that I'm getting um, all the yellow off and leaving the white. So funny when doing close-ups. <laughs> there have a cameraman before. So you want to go through and take all the yellow off your lemon. Again, not very much pressure, just a light pressure. And I'm constantly turning my lemon as I'm zesting, um, just to make sure that I get the yellow off and not the white. And mom, if people ask questions, they're going to appear on the screen. So make sure you're looking if they have questions. Check. Okay. All right, so that one looks pretty good. It's got, oh, this is fine. All right, he looks pretty good. So we're just going to bang off the rest of that zest, and that's good. So next thing we're going to do is juice our lemons for our cake and also for the glaze that goes on after. Um, so to do that, very simple, you just take a knife, cut your lemon in half, and there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, some people have zesters or juicers. This one my mom got from Ikea. It's a manual one. You just you know put your lemon on there and kind of squish it down. Um, there's also electronic ones out there. There's ones that you can put oh. the lemon in and squish. Grace would like to know how many lemons are we zesting? Um, you can go ahead and do four lemons. Thank you. Um, so you zest it or juice it and then put your lemon in there. I like to use the fork method. So I have a measuring cup. I have a little strainer that we have. Put it over top. Um, you take your lemon, cut in half. I have a fork. You just jam it into the lemon and then you twist. And when I twist, I'm also squeezing the lemon. So I'm kind of making a little bit of a vice. So that way then the lemon will squish and I'm getting all my juice out. And then you continue going around the lemon into each segment, just squishing it out and pushing 
I push the fork against the top of the lemon just to get all the juice out. So that one is dead. So now I'll do my other one. So again, just twisting it. If it breaks, not a problem. So that was that lemon, and then I have one more lemon here from earlier that I zested that I'm just going to juice. So again, just sticking it in the little segments, shoving it in there, and just vicing it down. I find this method is really user-friendly, and also it does get a lot of juice, which is good, and it doesn't get a whole lot of pith, which again, as we know, makes the lemon bitter. Piss? What? Did you say piss? No, I didn't say piss. I said pith. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Everyone's a critic, mother. All right. Yes, mom, the lemon piss. <laughs> okay, so lemons done. Just gonna throw these in the sink. Okay, so now our lemon juice is ready. I have my lemon zest ready. Now I'm going to uh, get my wet ingredients together and my dry ingredients together. So my dry ingredients are going to go into a little bowl. So we'll do those ones first. Don't want to lose the knife. So in my little bowl here, I'm going to put in um, one and a half cups of flour, a quarter teaspoon baking powder, a quarter teaspoon baking soda, and half a teaspoon of salt, all going in. So I think we have flour here. And when you're measuring flour from the bag, you're gonna notice that it compacts on the top. So to make sure that your flour is fluffy, um, that you're not over measuring your flour. I always take my cup and I just kind of put it in there and I kind of just give it a, a stir. You can see that. Just give it a little bit of a stir. That way then you're aerating your flour and you're not going to get extra flour in there. Yes, mom. When I took home economics in grade nine, I was always told to sift my flour. Is that not necessary anymore? It's not necessary. You can if you really want to, but I find with um, doing it this way, you don't have to sift it. But I know you like to use every single dish when you bake, so go ahead and sift your flour, Mom. Yeah, that's right. I'm getting the devil's look right now. So yeah, so you just put it in there. You kind of just give it a little bit of a stir, kind of like pick up all your flour. So that way then it's nice and light and ready to be measured. So to measure it, you just obviously stick your cup in there. Keep it up. Take your knife. I'm kind of just pushing it back and forth, making sure it's all level, scooping it out. Level the top, put it in there. So same thing with my half cup. Oh, half cup. So same thing with my half cup. Get ready to go. Again, mix around my flour, aerate it, grab my flour, use my back of my knife. Level it off, dump it in my bowl, ready to go. So that is my one and a half cups of flour. Not sifted. All right, so next we're gonna do our baking powder. Um, I use the magic baking powder. It is double acting, which is kind of nice. Um, so which means that it activates once in the bowl and then it also activates once in the oven. Um, so that kind of gives me a nice big rise for my bake. So we're going to open that up. And I have a little teaspoons here. So I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. When I do this, I just kind of stick my spoon in. I like to level it off on the lid, but if you don't have that, um, obviously just use your knife, level it off, put it in there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the baking soda. Baking 
soda in. And lastly, we have our salt, a quarter teaspoon, or sorry, half a teaspoon of salt. So now in there we have our flour, baking powder, baking soda, and our salt. So that is all ready to go. Last thing we're gonna do with that is give it a little whisk so everything is all mixed in together. So I'm just giving it a little whisk. Once again, this is another uh, way to aerate the flour, make sure everything's kind of separated so it's not all clumpy. Um, and also it kind of mixes the baking soda, baking powder, and the salt together. So when you put it all into your bake, it's all even. If you don't have a whisk, you can just use a fork and just kind of, you know, like you're making it. All right, so that is ready to go. Next thing we're gonna do is get our wet team together. So we have our um, quarter cup of yogurt and our two tablespoons of milk in here. I have vanilla Greek yogurt today. Um, and then I got my two tablespoons of uh, milk in there. We are going to add into this, let's get my recipe here. Do, do, do. We're gonna put in our two tablespoons of lemon juice and vanilla. So I'm not gonna use vanilla because I already have vanilla yogurt. If I added more vanilla, it would just be extra vanilla-y. But into this, I'm going to add in my lemon zest. So all that goes in there, and I'm going to give that a little stir. All right, so wet team ready, dry team ready to go. They're teams. Sorry? They're teams. They're teams. They got to play together nice. All right, so that's all done. Last thing we're gonna do is preheat our oven. So we're baking at 350 degrees today. Start. We all seem to get our pans ready. So we have a loaf pan today. Um, mine's a little bit dark, so you're gonna notice my bake is a little bit dark, but if you have a lighter pan, it's gonna be more golden. Yes, mom. Your husband says, add the vanilla. Add the vanilla. Well, it's already in the yogurt. Or else it'd be too vanilla. We want to overtake the flavor of the lemons. Everyone's a critic. All right, so to get our pan ready to go, um, I like to use margarine to grease my pans just because I don't have to um, wait for it to come to room temperature and like that. Um, use either butter or margarine. Don't use that little oil spray. Pam. Pam. Thank you, Mom. Pam. Um, that stuff really isn't good for baking in shapes because the oil runs down the side and you're gonna get stickage. So take a little bit of wax paper or paper towel, um, just make a little thing, grab some margarine or butter, and then just put it all in there. Make sure you get every little crevice. Really focus on the corners, because that's where it's gonna stick, if it's gonna stick anywhere. How many tablespoons of lemon juice? Sorry? Three. Three. Okay. So then we're also going to flour our pan. So I'm just going to take a nice big tablespoon or teaspoon, whatever, of flour. Put that into the pan. And then you just kind of bang it around just to kind of coat the entire pan. I don't want to do this over the sink. So I'm gonna do. So then you really want to make sure to bang out the extra flour so then you just got a nice flour pan like that. And then a little extra insurance that I always do for loaves is I do a little aluminum foil sling. So that way then it makes it really easy to take out your loaf and ensure there's no sticking. So to do that, you just take some aluminum foil, 
I'm going to take a long strip and then fold it in half. And then we're folding in half again. You kind of have to have them right. Small strip like that. And then you just put it in your pan. And you just put it in there. Make sure that the ends are kind of hanging over. So then it looks like that. So that's just a little extra insurance to make sure it's not going to stick. And then when you're ready to take it out, there it comes. So now our pan is ready and we're ready to go. Does it matter if you put the shiny side out or the duller side out? I don't think so. Yep. Maybe it has some reason, but I haven't noticed a difference. <laughs> okay, so now let's get our batter together. So in the Mix Master, I have my paddle attachment again. This is uh, Black, Black Forest, Forest, by the way. Is yes. the same. I have the paddle attachment again, or if you have a hand mixer, that is fine too. Um, so in here, we're going to put in our half a cup of butter. I'm just going to break them up. There he goes. So we're going to cream our butter and one cup of sugar together. We're going to reserve the extra quarter cup for a syrup we're going to make that's going to go on top of our loaf after it's baked. Now that that looks nice and soft, I'm going to add in my one cup of sugar. Temperature of the oven is 350. And then one thing I really like to do with the mix master, because I find the, the stainless steel bowl gets really cold, I like to keep it up with my hands. Because he's chilly. I never knew that. Sometimes I even put um, a towel around him just to keep him warm. He likes to be warm. Just like that. And then you want to make sure that you stop once in a while and scrape the sides of your bowl. So to do that, you just take a spatula and then just take the sides and just push down to make sure everything gets back into the middle where it's supposed to be. So it's creaming all together. And we're gonna continue with this until everything is nice and light and fluffy. For about how long? Probably about five minutes. So what's happening is the little granules of sugar are punching little holes in the butter. And that is being trapped by the air, which is why it's going to get creamy and light and uh, fluffy. And that is what's going to help keep our cake nice and light and help leaven it. Very good at your job, Mom. Thank you. I just want everybody to know this is unpaid labor. Hey, you volunteer. 
Bill, you'll have to ask Katie if there's a union for directors and cameramen. Everybody still with me? Everybody doing okay? So you can see that our butter is starting to lighten. It's changing color to white instead of yellow. That means we're getting there. Jan has says sort of. Sort of. She's getting here. You okay, Janice? So we're going to stop and we're going to scrape again. this takes a while because then everyone can catch up to us. You can see we're getting there, but it's still a little bit um, not creamy enough yet. So we're going to keep going. Is Charlotte helping Janice? Char is beating the gates. Okay, good. That's our we're Toronto viewing audience. 
We also have Kingston. And if Anne's on there, we have Australia. Who's Australia? Anne. Oh. She's on there. I haven't seen Anne. Sometimes she's on there. It's early in the morning though for her. Yep. This is not just some low-key production, folks. This is worldwide. <laughs> So you can see we're really getting there now. Our butter is looking nice and creamy. I'm still heating my bowl. He just gets cold. So that looks pretty good. So it's nice and light and fluffy and airy. It's exactly what we're looking for. So I'm just scraping my bowl again. And now we're gonna add in our eggs one at a time. And why do you do it one at a time? Um, basically what you're doing is creating an emulsion. And if you add too much liquid at once, it's just gonna separate. So if you think about this, butter is all fat. Eggs are mostly water. Fat and water don't like to get along. So, but the egg yolk has a little bit of fat and protein in it. If you add them one at a time, that gives the egg yolk a chance to bind everything together and make a nice emulsion for us. So when we're cracking our eggs, you always wanna do it one at a time and you wanna do it on a flat surface. Don't do it on the side of the bowl because what you're gonna do is get shrapnel into your egg and you're gonna end up with eggshell in your egg and that's not good. So to do that, you just crack it on a surface and just put it in a little bowl. Once you've inspected and there's no eggshell shrapnel, you're good to go. So we're gonna turn them on to medium low and we're gonna put our egg in there. we have a nice emulsion going on there. There's no breakage. It all looks creamy and smooth. So we're gonna scrape our bowl again, get everything down. Wipe that. And we're gonna add in our second egg now. So that looks pretty good. How's everybody doing? Is everybody with me? Awesome. So also to this, um, I realized I added my lemon zest into my wet team. Um, you can add it into here as well. Um, I got too excited and I put mine in with my, with my wet team. So in here, I have my yogurt. Don't tell that one. <laughs> I add my yogurt. I have my milk, my lemon zest, and my uh, two tablespoons of lemon juice. 
Um, and then vanilla would also go in here if you're using it. You can also put your lemon zest into your butter egg mixture. That would be fine too. All right, so now we're ready to assemble our batter. So we have our butter and sugar and eggs ready to go. We're going to be alternating, putting in our dry ingredients with our wet ingredients. This is gonna create a very tender crumb and it's also gonna make sure that our emulsion doesn't break. So to do that, you turn this on low speed. We're gonna add in a couple good tablespoons of dry. When they've disappeared, like that, you're gonna add in half of your wet ingredients. that has mixed in, you're going to go ahead again with a couple tablespoons of your dry team. And when it's mixed again, you're going to go in with the rest of your wet ingredients. and then you're gonna stop your mixer. Yes, everything is not fully mixed in, but that's okay, because we are still gonna add our fruit into here, and if we keep going, we're gonna end up with an overmixed batter. So at this point, I'm just gonna scrape down my paddle. Get all that stuff off of there. I was a kid, this is my favorite part, licking the paddle. Remember that, Mom? Yes, I do. I remember once my grandmother, Bobby, she got mad at me because I wanted to lick the beater. <laughs> she didn't understand that concept. So then our bowl comes off. Push that out of the way. All right, so this is what we got. So now we're gonna get our berries ready to go. So to do that, we're gonna coat them with a little bit of flour. If we don't coat them with flour, what's gonna happen is the heavy fruit is gonna sink all the way down to the bottom of your loaf and you're gonna end up with lemon cake and berries. And although that's good, it's not really what we're going for here. So I have a quarter cup of blueberries um, because I couldn't find any raspberries at the store when I was there, so I got blueberries today. If you have raspberries, exactly the same procedure. Um, you can also, yeah, I would stick with blueberries, raspberries, or blackberries. That'd be really good too. So these are going to go into a bowl, and I've already washed them and dried them. Just like that. We're going to just put a little tiny bit of flour in here. Just a little bit. And we're going to coat our blueberries with flour. Just using my hands, just coat them, cover them a little bit. Perform makes a little protective shield. Have you got that, Bill? All right, so our blueberries are coated with flour and they're looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna dump all this in there, because if you do, you're gonna have extra flour. You're just gonna take your hand and just kind of scoop out your berries, kind of sieve them off and throw them in. If you have a lot of berries, you can use a, um, a sifter. You can put your sifter over the sink and um, dump everything in there to extract your flour and then put your berries in like that. Okay, and now we're gonna be folding in our blueberries. So to fold, I'm sure y'all remember from last week, we go around the side, lift up the middle and turn the bowl. So we're going around the side, lifting up the middle, turning the bowl, and push. Twist, turn, lift, 
and push. Again, twist, turn, lift, and push. So we're gonna to continue to do this until our blueberries are mixed in. Um, if we were to complete this with the mixer, obviously our berries are gonna get all mangled and our uh, batter will be over mixed. Does that smell good, Mom? Hey, don't it taste like, it. I'm not tasting it. It smells like lemons. Mmm, very nice. Bobby would love this. I know she would. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. So now we're going to get our pan. I went a little crazy, so I'm going to trim, gonna trim my ends. <laughs> Don't leave me like that. I went crazy. Do, do, do. I wasn't going to say anything. Yes, you were. You were judging me from afar. Okay. And strand, so we're not crazy. Batter goes in. Make sure to get every little last drop. Right, Mom? Very important. So then we're just going to gently level this using our spatula. Make sure to push it into the corners. Push it and then kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle. Turn it. Again, pushing down to move it into our corners. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. Leveling it all out. Make sure it's nice and level. Do you ever sort of um, clump it on the counter? No. Oh, no. okay. Why? Don't, don't bang it on the counter. If you bang it on the counter, all you're doing is getting rid of all that air that you worked so hard to put into your bake, and you're going to end up with a brick. Okay. Yeah. So you're better off to wiggle and gently nudge it into the, count, into the corners rather than bang it on the counter to level it. Check. Check. So just keep leveling it out, making sure you got it right into your corners there. Over there. Over there? Okay. There's stuff in there. So judgmental. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now we have a couple options here. Um, if you want to be extra fancy with your loaf, you can um, do something that I learned in pastry school where you use a knife. Put a little bit of oil on your knife and then you can run your knife through the middle. What that'll do is it'll give your loaf a place to open up. So it's going to open up there and look, you know, kind of peaky like a mountain. Or you can do what I'm going to do and just leave it plain because then we're going to get a nice dome on top. So when we do our glaze, it's going to look really, really nice. But if you do want to be fancy and do the little peak, what you do is you take a sharp knife like this. You're going to put a little bit of oil on there. Get our vegetable oil. You don't want to use olive oil for this because obviously olive oil has flavor. So you put a little bit of oil on your knife and uh, just run your finger down it and make sure you don't have tons on it and just kind of guillotine, guillotine your cake. And that way then that'll make a little oil line in your cake and that will allow your cake to open up right at that spot. I never knew that. Well, now you know. Now I know. So I'm going to leave my cake like this because I want it to have kind of a dome top. So this is all done. So we're going to blow it a kiss and we're going to throw it in the oven. Sorry, you want to You can't it? do that. You can't do that. No, it's COVID-19. You well, have don't to. don't blow on it then. Well, you can't kiss on it either. I'm not eating it. Into the oven, I guess. Good, more cake for me. So we're going to set our timer for 40 minutes and we're going to check on our cake at that time. So while that's baking, we're gonna go over um, our glaze. And if you wanna be really fancy, we're also gonna make a little quick of icing that you can use on top of your cake as well. So for the glaze, we're gonna get a microwave safe bowl. And we're gonna put a quarter cup of lemon juice that we squeezed into the bowl. 
And then we're also going to add a quarter cup of sugar onto there. Just like that. So for those of you who kind of know this recipe, you're going to say, oh, simple syrup. It is, except with lemon juice instead of water. So then you're just going to mix that up together. And then you would pop this in the microwave and microwave it for a minute, take it out, stir it, microwave it for another 30 seconds, take it out, stir it, microwave it for another 30 seconds, take it out, stir it, and you're making sure all the sugar is dissolved. When all your sugar is dissolved, your syrup is ready to go. And what you would do is, after your cake comes out of the oven, you're going to let it cool for about five minutes, and then you're going to take your warm, simple syrup, and you're going to just spoon it on the top of your cake. And that's going to soak into your cake and make your cake so moist and lemony, it's going to be delicious. How much sugar? A quarter cup of sugar and a quarter cup of lemon juice. So equal amounts. Now, since it's Easter and you want to be extra fancy, you might want to make a glaze for your cake, an icing for your cake. Easy peasy. So to do that, we have another bowl here. Just going to grab a powdered sugar. Oh, sorry. Just leave me on the job here. I don't know about these people. Thank you. Don't forget, I'm not paid. I can tell. Hey. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put in a big couple of heaping spoonfuls of powdered sugar in there. There's really no recipe for this. Play around, see what you like. Um, this is just kind of a really simple glaze or icing, if you want to call it. So I have probably about. I would say almost half a cup in there. And then I'm going to add... Oh, it's more than that. You think that's more than that? Yep. Okay. My mom thinks it's more than half a cup. So anyway, I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of lemon juice. Just a little bit. Tiny, tiny bit. Like a teaspoon in there. And I'm going to stir it up. You can always add more lemon juice, but it's hard to take away the lemon juice when it's already in. So obviously that's way too little, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm gonna stir it. So that's still pretty thick. So I'm gonna add a little bit more lemon juice. And I'm gonna stir it. This glaze can also be used for cakes or cookies if you want to in a pinch. Um, makes a really good fast glaze. You don't have to use lemon juice. You can use milk. You can use uh, water. You can add a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of extract in there if you want to to flavor it. Uh, a little bit of cinnamon would be really good as well in cookies. Maybe not for a lemon loaf. But a little bit of rum. A little bit of rum. Ooh, very good, Mom. A little bit of rum. All right. So that is all stirred together. And I can see that I have really nice pouring consistency on there. A little bit of loaf, that's okay. So that's exactly what I want for my loaf. So when my loaf is cool, I'm gonna drizzle this on top, just using a spoon, lift it up, and just kind of drizzle it over my loaf. And that's gonna be my glaze. If you want a thicker glaze, no problem. So if you're at this point, you're just gonna add a little bit more powdered sugar into there. Mix it all in. And voila, you got a thicker glaze. Easy. If you want a thinner glaze, you're going to add a little bit more lemon juice. So you can kind of play with it and see what you like. Um, obviously, if you have a thicker glaze, you're going to have the white line, so it's going to be a stronger glaze on your cake. If you want a thinner glaze where you don't really see it, you're going to want to make it thinner, so you're going to add a little bit more lemon juice and make it thin. All right, I think that's about it. The lemon juice cuts down on the sweetness of the icing sugar, so it's not overly sweet. That is definitely true too, yes. Yeah, so with lemon juice, it's gonna be obviously less sweet. Rum, probably less sweet. Um, milk will be a little bit sweeter, but you know, it's a glaze, it's good. 
so that's it for today. Uh, when my cake comes out of the oven, I'm going to syrup it and I'll glaze it and I'll post pictures. Make sure to share yours and happy Easter, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I thought we'd do this together. You want, you want to turn yeah. this? But you're, you're in my social distancing space. Oh. I don't know about this. Okay. Okay. Happy Easter, everyone. <laughs> and if you want to thank Lisa, don't send her money. Send toilet paper. Bye. <laughs> and this has been brought to you by Crow Lake Productions, and we'll be back next week. So tune in. Bye. Bye. Oh, it's accent our way. We can't do this. Okay, we have to do it again, Mom. <laughs>